Well, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. Welcome to part two of our talk about miniatures and board games. Last week, we spent a good chunk of time uh, talking about the pros and cons of detailed miniatures and board games, as well as sharing our preferences in game components, what we like to use when we're playing games. And we ended up talking about that a little longer than expected. So I do think it was a great conversation. Um, I think it flowed really well, and I think it's worth checking out. The problem is we kind of ran out of time. The actual question we were answering came from Tito B.A., who wrote, Mo, I'm looking for a board game with lots of miniatures, preferably fantasy-themed, I came across Quest for the Dragon Lords, but I got mixed reviews about it. Do you have any other suggestions? So yeah, the plan was to sit down and go, okay, what do you prefer, minis or meeples or cubes, and talk about it, and then eventually give Tito this nice big game list. Well, not that big. Um, but then we realized we were like an hour and a half in going back and forth on miniatures and board games and what we prefer. And we were realizing the entire show, we still had some uh, reviews to get to later in the show and lots to talk about in the Bell Hops table toss. We're like, you know what? We're going to call it. So I think the first time ever we actually stopped the show midway and went, you know what? We're going to push this off till next week. So here we are with our first ever two part Ask the Bell Hop segment again, talking about miniatures and board games, but this time specifically looking at games we dig that feature a ton of miniatures with an eye towards fantasy themes. So if you did miss last week, I do encourage you to pause here, go back to episode 222, Miniatures versus Meeples, and skip to the Ask the Bellhop segment and check out that talk. Now, I'm noting this because I have a feeling some of the feelings we shared there impacted the games we picked to talk about tonight. All caught up? Okay, well, let's get to the list. As usual, the only order here is the order in which the games came to mind when making this list. So the first game that popped into my head when I was thinking about fantasy games with lots of miniatures was Super Dungeon Explore. Uh, this one was originally kickstarted by Soda Pop Miniatures, who ended up working with Ninja Division. And there was a big mess there with fulfillment and everything else, but I'm not worried about that. This was the first big miniature-filled Kickstarter I personally backed. And a big thing we talked about last week was how for a while there it seemed like these kickstarters were coming every week with these massive things with multiple boxes and so many minis well super dungeon explorer was was my first the first one i backed like that now this was a game that attempted to recreate the feel of fantasy button matchers um specifically games like gauntlet to some success on pulling it off now the thing is if you do pick this up the core rule book that came with it was so so and the core gameplay was so so but they did get in there and completely redevelop and rewrite the game and produced a new rule book that's actually really good. Now, miniature wise, these are great. They are great looking miniature mini fantasy miniatures. You got heroes and orcs and goblins and all the stuff you'd expect, but they're all chibis. OK, so they're all, you know, the, the miniatures with the heads are as big as their bodies. And that alone, I know, is not going to be for everyone. Personally, I think it fits the aesthetic of the game going for that gauntlet eight bit look. But I know not everyone likes Shibi Minis. Well, next up, we have Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game from Steamforged Games and all of its expansions. Yeah. Now, the problem is that it's post-apocalyptic science fantasy. So probably not the sort of fantasy that Tito is looking for. You can't, however, deny that this game has some great minis and the mm. gameplay is rather solid as long as you are up for the epic length game <laughs> night. Yeah. Or are cool with splitting your games up over multiple sessions. If you are, yeah, there's a lot of game there to love in Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, this is one we reviewed. So what I encourage you, if you're you're questioning this one, if you want to know more info, check out our review of Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game. And if it does look cool, they are about to launch a second Kickstarter for Horizon Forbidden West that looks very similar to the first one with even cooler miniatures. Next up, I've got War of the Ring 2nd Edition from Ares Games. Not only does this Middle Earth board game have a ton of miniatures with more available through expansions, this is considered the best two-player board game in the world right now and the best war game in the world right now. Now, my concern with this recommendation, though, is I'm not sure why Tito's looking for fantasy miniatures. If it just gains with a fantasy theme, great, pick this up. You're going to love it. But if you're actually picking up fantasy miniatures to maybe use with other games or possibly as D&D miniatures, you're not going to want to pick this up for that because these are small miniatures. These are like war game miniatures, right? They're not the same scale as D&D minis or Games Workshop. 
Also, even if you do just plan to use them in this game, be warned, some of the sculpts are very similar, especially with the different mounted troops. And many people at least partially paint their miniatures when playing this game. So they'll like paint the bases different colors so they stand out a little bit better. So you can tell your mounted elf cavalry from your Riders of Rohan, for example. And I'm pulling those names out of my butt, my Lord of the Rings, out of my Mountain Doom. Um, so that might not be actually the troops that get confused. I just know there's some that are very similar. All right. Well, you knew we were going to get to Simon games eventually. So we're going to start <laughs> with Zombicide. And in particular, Black Plague or Green Horde, as those are the fantasy versions where you're fighting necromancers, undead, and infected orcs. Tons of great fantasy characters and monsters here as well as a solid cooperative game. We know people who go all in on any Zombicide Kickstarter just to get all of the miniatures without any interest in playing the game. Yeah. They make great minis for any fantasy game. Now, sticking with big Simon Kickstarters with tons of minis, I'm going to call out specifically Rising Sun. Though, honestly, this, our number five pick, could have been Blood Rage or Ankh, depending on which type of fantasy you're looking for between Asian, Norse, or Egyptian. These are all area majority games by Eric Lang that feature some of the coolest miniatures out there. These may in include your various factions, your troops. One of the big things is these games all include these monster minis that the players can bring into play during the game that are just fantastic, chunky, well, just awesome looking miniatures. I love their games. Now, of all the games I played, Rising Sun is my personal favorite. I especially love the, the tea party aspect of teaming up with different players. And I like the fact that there's some of the things where like the bards can tell stories of the battle and you can win just by being present while two other armies fight. It is my personal favorite, but that's also, I did go all in on the Kickstarter. So there might be a little bit bias there as well, but really any of the Eric Lang Simon area majority games. Well, sticking to another Simon game, I'm going to toss Cthulhu death may die out there. Now I admit calling this fantasy is a stretch as it's said in the 1920s, but there are plenty of generic looking culto cultists and a ton of mythos creatures that would fit in great for any period. Plus you get a very different take on a Cthulhu game, more of a two fisted pulp guns blazing game than an investigative one. If you did the Kickstarter, you also got one of the biggest miniatures ever made, which also yeah. doubles as a final quest board and maybe a, you know, a feeding bowl for, you know, a menagerie <laughs> of pets. All right. We could probably sit here all night and could have done the, our top 15 Simon games. So just check out anything else Simon has to offer for miniature heavy games. They are called cool mini or not for a reason. Well, let's move away from them and move over to one of the other big miniature game producers out there, and that is Fantasy Flight Games. And I'm going to start with the Descent series of games. Now, these are a series of dungeon crawling games that always came with pretty decent miniatures. Now, miniature games, I got to say, were like, yeah, I don't know about if I like these much because they were board game miniatures. They, they were kind of overly flexible and not too detailed, detailed enough for a miniature gamer. But like the hobby gamers are like, come on, these look terrible. Personally, I thought they were fantastic for board game quality. And since the original Descent, uh, moving on to second edition and now Legends of the, of the Dark, I can't remember if it's of the dark or in the dark, my bad. Um, they've gotten better. The miniatures keep improving. Um, the sculpts keep getting better. The quality is better. The other thing that's nice is along with the miniatures getting better, the gameplay has changed from this one versus many very adversarial you feel evil playing the DM kind of thing because it feels like you should be playing a role playing and helping the players, but you're playing against them to a now very cooperative game that is now fully app driven, which lets all the players work together and collaborate against the app, which also does things like added variety and things like that. I've enjoyed seeing the evolution of the Descent series over time. Well, another great fantasy flight game with quite a few minis is the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. Similar to Descent, this is an app-driven cooperative game set in Middle-earth with a fully replayable campaign and multiple expansions out already, including a big one that just came out this year. We have friends who have completed this one and started over and are currently yeah. going through the campaign a second time and finding it very different from the first. 
Yeah, it's not often we recommend games we haven't personally played, but I do own this. I've read the instructions. We've got, an, um, I think we have the unboxings live. We have an unboxing. I don't remember if we released it or not of this one. This game looks fantastic. I just haven't had the time to play a campaign game. Of all the games on the list, this is the one I personally want to play through the most. But like, it has come so strongly recommended from friends of ours that I figured I, I, don't, I feel comfortable recommending it myself. All right, speaking of Lord of the Rings, if you are looking for a ton of smaller miniatures, um, even smaller than the ones in Lord of the Ring, great for, say, smaller dungeon tiles. Like, I, I'm surprised I don't see more people who run RPGs doing this and shrinking things down and using these smaller miniatures with smaller maps just for table space um, or using representing armies on a map. I actually recommend Risk Lord of the Rings Trilogy Edition. Now, remember, this isn't just a list of games with a lot of miniatures. These are games we actually recommend because they're good games. I found this to be the best standard version of Risk out there. Now, I say standard because I'm excluding Risk Legacy. Risk Legacy is fantastic. Pick it up. You're not going to find any fantasy miniatures there. You're going to find post-apocalyptic ones. You're looking for tiny little Mad Max dudes. Pick that up, maybe. But Risk Lord of the Rings Trilogy Edition is really solid because you can just play it as Risk if you love Risk. But it's on the Middle Earth map, but you can also play it in the like saga version where there's a whole aspect where there's the fellowship trying to make their way to Mount Doom, which becomes a timer in the game, which is the thing that most people complain the most about risk going on forever. Well, if the hobbits get to Mount Doom, the game's over or if they get wiped out before they get there. Well, next, we have another company that falls under the Asmodee brand with Mice and Mystics from Plat Hat Games. Now, this storybook game has fantastic fantasy minis with a twist. The characters here are mice, and their adversaries are things like rats, centipedes, and spiders. For some cute, cool and unique minis, check out the Tail Feathers standalone expansion for mice riding flying birds. In addition to unique minis, you get a fantastic story that's great to play through as a family. I, 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 I am so bummed that Tail Feathers did not take off more. It, it used a flight pass system. You actually had birds that pivoted so you could like it mattered which way you were turning. Such a great game that, that I, I keep hoping. Plaid Hat's still around. There's still a chance there'll be more coming. All right. I'm going to wrap up our main set of suggestions with the classic. Um, I don't know if you can still see it above your head. No, the camera's still up too far down. And that is Hero Quest. Uh, the original Milton Bradley Games Workshop collaboration, which was recently re-released and reprinted through Hasbro Pulse. The new version has even more miniatures with different sculpts than the original. While I still love the original Warhammer-based miniatures, and they'll, they'll always be some of my favorites, I can't deny how much nicer the new ones really look. And I gotta say, it's great to have it so that every orc doesn't look the same anymore. Now, a bonus here that I think is great if you are thinking of getting this game for the miniatures to use possibly in D&D &D or another RPG is that you also get some truly great looking scenery. You're not just getting heroes and things to fight against them. If anyone has seen any of our Gloomhaven live streams or anything like that is, is, is any of those, I use the scenery from Hero Quest in everything. If I am playing a fantasy game, you're probably going to see a cardboard bookshelf from the original game somewhere on the table. It's also nice to see that Hasbro is finally putting out brand new content for the game. So not only did they publish the original stuff through Pulse, they then brought back the Barbarian Quest Pack and the Elf Quest Pack, though they renamed them, and they have now brand new adventures, so the game continues to grow. Well, next we have a few honorable mentions. Games we haven't personally played, but that look pretty good, at least as far as the minis are concerned. All right, the first one I have is Dark Souls, the board game. Now, I don't know too much about this one myself, um, but when I was doing the Google, I always I always research these up topics like some a lot of it comes off my head. But then I, I look online and I Google it and I board games with lots of minis. And I'm like, Are there anything I missed? Well, this came up on a number of other people's recommendations. So I wanted to include it. Now, what I have read about this turns me off. It is a brutally hard cooperative miniature game, which I guess that represents Dark Souls. Like there's a whole Souls like style of game, which is these games where you have to figure out that you, you go in and you die and then you're like, you start to figure out the pattern or you figure out the trick, right? Well, I guess they did a good job of getting that into the board game. And I, from what I've heard from Dark Souls fans, the aesthetic of this perfectly captures the aesthetic of the digital version. Now, when this came out in 2017, it did nab a couple of awards. 
and new content is still coming out for it. Well, I've got up Cthulhu Wars, which has the largest, chunkiest miniatures of any of the games mentioned tonight, if you exclude the giant from Death May Die. Now, this yeah. is an asymmetric game where you get to play the Elder Gods flying, vying for control of the Earth, uh, which is a swap from what you usually see in Mythos-themed games. Next, I'm going to call out Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, again, this was a Kickstarter with a bit of a sordid pass and some fulfillment issues, but this featured the most ambitious series of miniatures I've seen in a board game. That is, if you're into Beefcake Frazetta-style artwork, and optional pinup versions of your fantasy miniatures. If that's your thing, you're going to want to try to find a copy of Kingdom Death Monster. The people I know who got this are really digging it, though it's honestly the miniature painters in my, my friend group who really jumped at this one. Well, next we have Sword and Sorcery, which is an extremely well-regarded dungeon crawler that, similar to Gloomhaven, uses an AI system to eliminate the Game Master player and is thus fully cooperative. The miniatures here give me a big hero quest feel and are of that yeah. same solid board game quality as the descent series. And this one appeals because it doesn't need an app. As we've talked about many times, apps kind of scare me for possibly no longer working. I own board games that I can no longer play because they had an integration and it's now gone. All right. So I'm going to have two more here. Um, these are games that at least I played, but are long out of print. They're going to be hard to find. You can't just go on online and buy them now. And if you can, you're going to probably find them for a ridiculous price. You don't want to pay. But these are also games that I keep stumbling upon. Games that you find at local game stores that still have new old stock or on eBay or you go to a yard sale or a thrift store and find them. These are games that if you're looking for fantasy miniatures, keep your eyes open for them. Well, the first is Mage Knight, the miniature game, not the board game. It's one of the best solo games out there. The old clicks-based war game features pre-painted miniatures, war machines, and scenery. WizKids put out a mix of subpar to truly fantastic miniatures for this series when it lasted. Mm -hmm. And there's a variety of pieces that Mo uses in other fantasy games. Uh, also, the base game just wasn't that bad at all. Yeah. Sort of Warhammer skirmish with less complex complexity and none of the hobby. Now, the next one you can get, but you should be able to start getting again soon. And that is HeroScape, not to be confused with HeroQuest, HeroScape. This is a hex based battle game featuring miniatures from all over time and space, including some great looking fantasy ones. Now, the big feature of this game was the pre-painted miniatures a bit, but more importantly, the plastic hex tiles you use to make a three dimensional board. They came in all shapes and sizes, and eventually they added things like trees, walls, bridges, and castles. Now, the main, excuse me. Now, the main reason I wanted to have this on our list is that after Hasbro failed to bring the back the game back through Hasbro Pulse, um, I guess lightning doesn't strike twice. I fully expected that to fund as well as HeroQuest did. Um, they they dropped it, but then Renegade Games has since picked up the license and is bringing HeroScape back. Well, there you have it our thoughts on miniatures in board games, and then some of our favorite board games that feature a ton of miniatures with an eye towards fantasy miniatures in particular. So do you have a game suggestion for Tito? What, what's a board game you own or know of that has a ton of fantasy miniatures in it? Let us know in the comments. Email me, mo at tabletopbellhop.com. I promise it's working now. Or hit me up on social media where I can be found pretty much everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Even better, join our Discord at discord.com slash Tabletop Bellhop. That'd be a great place to let us know your thoughts on Meeples versus Miniatures.